Welcome back to T4, a new series to come to Sunday mornings now. This is Slave Style. Believe me, it can make a lot of difference. A couple of new trends here. A new look or two there. What's seven days of style news between friends? Well, it can make the difference between being in or out. Because at the end of the day, Star matters. It's what you do with it that counts. <laughs> On Slave This Week, the style secrets of the Weather Girls. Why Brooklyn is a trendy name. Find out whether your trainers have passed their sell-by date. The latest in lingerie for men. And I meet Britain's coolest cab drivers. But before all that, here's your host, the smoothest man on the planet. Well, his planet, Chris Cleverly. Welcome to Slave, a brand new star program with a brand new presenter, me. Don't be scared now, your name's on the door. This is a show for you. So if you want to be the first on the block to get the lowdown on the freshest fashion, the sharpest design, and the hottest faces around, this is going to be the place to be. It's been a busy week. The Mac is back, and it's not the Big Mac. Whitney wears one for her Lauren Hill makeover, and Joan Collins dons one in the latest Olympus ad. But the real style pointer comes from this week's re-release of Michael Caine's super cool gangster flick, Get Carter. But forget the big sideburns. The 70s look can go too far. Uh, ow. Ow. What colour are your balls? In golf, it seems, black is the new white. Hip young swingers are buying black golf balls, disposable golf bags and orange tees by new label, Refugees. But will it catch on at the US Open? Plastic is back. Today sees the opening of an exhibition at London's Design Museum of Werner Panton's slinky plastic chairs. Ideal for science fiction films, but not so good for a cosy read in front of a roaring open fire. It doesn't matter. What life you lead, everyone's a fashion slave these days. Footballers, politicians, barristers. This week, find out everything that you wanted to know about a weather girl's wardrobe, but were afraid to ask. Things looking rather damp and miserable. Sunshine there for Scotland. Heavy showers into the southeast for tonight. It's going to be a fine, dry day. Tomorrow will be very overcast and wet to begin with. Once that's cleared in the morning, it's bright and fine. I wore some hipsters once with a tiny sort of skimpy top, but I think you've got to be a bit careful about showing too much flesh. But I just come back from holiday and I was brown. And unfortunately, it rained the next day. I have a, a see-through black top, which is see-through all except for that bit, which I wear with a jacket over it when I'm doing the weather. And I've sort of had comments, what was that you were wearing at the weekend? I'm not showing anything I shouldn't be showing, but it's obviously fueling people's imaginations. It's not exactly been a blistering summer so far, I'm sure you'll agree. But if there's one thing that has been raising temperatures in Britain, it's TV's weather girls. We're there in the same place at the same time every week, and the only thing that changes, well, the weather doesn't, does it? Um, the only thing that changes is what we wear. If they see me in something like this, in something flimsy, they know it's going to be quite a fine day. Temperatures today in the hot and sticky conditions in the southeast. My all-time favourite at the moment, very basic jacket, but top, top bright. Weather on TV used to look like this. And that's the weather. All like this. Elsewhere in the UK it'll be dry. But then along came live TV to loosen things up. Been at Eastern England or Eastern as Scotland. And now everyone wants a piece of the action. Last August, it was the last bank holiday weekend that was actually going to be decent weather. So I bought this sort of clouds bikini, sort of blue sky and clouds bikini, and uh, threw that on. I said, basically, viewers, it's the last chance to dig out your bikini this weekend, so enjoy it. So whilst in the real world, it's been more about drizzle than sizzle, on screen at least, things are definitely changing. And the viewers, well, some viewers in particular, seem to like it. I get quite a bit of amusing fan mail, shall we say. Um, I get a lot of people writing to me asking me for dates. I have heard that people do find weather girls attractive and they are people who you might like to cop off with if you were a fella. But I couldn't possibly comment, could I really? Playboy offered me um, quite a bit of money. I was a bit dubious about that because I didn't think I'd ever be able to look my friends in the face again. 
there again, they probably would have been looking at my face anyway, so. That's true, Emma. They'd probably be looking at your jacket, the one item of clothing that weather girls still can't seem to do without. There is an expectation that you should wear a jacket, definitely, and I guess it's because we're so closely linked to the news. I used to have a rotation at first, when I first started doing the weather. I had it sort of like cream jacket, pink jacket, green jacket, you know, and I would remember it, but now, I guess I've got too many outfits to remember. The culture shock of someone coming in on in see-through lace or a tight, tight lycra top with nipples showing through might be too much to bear. Oh, weather girl, stylish crumbs. Now, I would be lying if I said that every weather girl cuts it style-wise, but the top five in this week's fashion league are hat. Well, they're cool. Oh, you not, I mean. At five, never happier than in a light from mini dress, it's live TV's icy Norwegian Anne-Marie Foss. You wouldn't believe it if you didn't see it. At four, Sean Lloyd gets the mercury rising with the sharpest fringe and the most suggestive hands on television. This high pressure will be way across the country. On a fine day, Femioki shines bright at three. Just try not to catch her when she's overcast. This is as good as it gets. At number two, GMTV may be a style vacuum, but if you like a finely tailored forecast, tune in for Andrea McLean. As it is going to feel quite sticky and quite humid. Which means that HTV's Emma Hignett is queen of the weather girls. Bigger hugging dresses, stiff corsets and little black vests. Beat that, Ian McGaskill. Don't expect too much as far as temperatures are concerned. <laughs> Sometimes, when I'm getting dressed, I'll ask myself, are these trousers in or are these trousers out? But you know what? There's an easy answer. How's the new car? The Repostero. Oh, it's like so cool. I love it. Yeah, they're okay if you like that kind of thing. Come on, Jules. Two airbags, better than one. Ergonomic double density crush zone. Flexible driver's case. Yeah, 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 yeah. De rigueur, Christoph. De rigueur. Organic petrol, obviously. Yes, but is it extra virgin? Of course. And it's from Paul Smith. Yeah. Everyone's got an opinion about what the future's going to be like. But there's certain people out there who know for sure. Meet the predictors. Technology in the future is going to have to be a lot more human-centric. Within the home environment, we're going to see products very, very soon that are actually analysing your condition. We can imagine a situation whereby you walk into the bathroom in the morning and your bathroom mirror tells you you look like you really need to do something about it. We have the technology from Japan of a new Japanese toilet that monitors your pulse, your blood pressure, etc., etc., from the pressure of your bottom on the seat, and then goes one step further, rather impolitely, and analyzes your waste products. We're having watches developed uh, that are actually mobile phones and that can communicate, send emails, faxes, etc., etc. We have other watches like this one, for example that uh, actually incorporate a global positioning uh, system, accurately defining where I am in any given space and time. It would also plot my route from point A to point B using various landmarks. Uh, the opportunities here are wonderful, I think, for going down the pub and having a global positioning watch to get you home again. Car design at the moment, we're looking at uh, monitoring of the driver by uh, recognising the iris, by recognising the eyes themselves. 
and would therefore not start the car if it wasn't an authorised driver. Another example would be a Japanese company working on a system whereby they monitor the rate at which you are blinking. Apparently, as you become tired, you blink more, and at a certain point it would release citrus scents into the air conditioning unit to refresh and to awaken the driver. In the home environment, we have a situation where we have domestic appliances like fridges fully capable of ordering their own foods and washing machines, which will recognise when they're about to break down and will not only call an engineer but will tell him what parts to bring. This could be the absolute end of, I'm sorry missus, I haven't got that part, we'll have to wait for it to be delivered. People often ask me if I ever get the future wrong. Absolutely not. We all laughed, but it's official. Brooklyn is the coolest name on the planet. In New York City, Brooklyn is now officially the in place to party and make babies. New York's club kids are heading to the suburbs of Brooklyn and the Bronx to avoid the mayor's party crackdowns. Like a gossip with your neighbour over the garden hedge? Well, now you can do it in your front room. This new concept in designer furniture means you really do have a greenhouse. You can even keep your cucumber in the desk drawer. Slave gives the thumbs up to Mel G's new video, but the spray paint big skirt horror scene has been done already. Don't believe us? It seems Alexander McQueen always has the best ideas first. Tank tops are back. No, not the woolly sort, but the fishy kind. This was one of the creations at last week's British Graduate Fashion Week, which included super chunky jewellery and extra large puffball skirts. And you thought all students wore old jeans and baggy jumpers. Well, now it looks like they designed them too, even for the catwalk. After the break, continue the journey through style that we call Slay. Why three wheels are cooler than four? The man behind Madonna's best video in years? And what your boyfriend should be wearing under his Levi's? <laughs> style nourishment you need in just 30 minutes. So, what are you a slave to? Remember, there's something for every taste in this show. It's silky, it's frilly, and it's for blokes. Hot in America, Apres Noir make lingerie not for transvestites, but for real men who want to express their feminine side. Much like ex-Dexy singer Kevin Rowland in Suspenders for his comeback campaign. Money must grow on trees. Today, Sotheby's auctioned the ultimate in stylish interior decor items. A 600-year-old bonsai for £50,000. DJ's Fat Boy Slim and Armand Van Helden went disc to disc at London's Brixton Academy last weekend. But Slave knows that the mix master kids of Tokyo are all scratching on this summer's must-have keyring. A DJ in your pocket. Forget your shiny metallic mobiles. In Paris, if you want the smoothest thing in phones, Slave knows the only buttons to press are snakeskin. Expect lots of hissing on the line. Video directors are the new rock and roll. In Sweden's Jonas Ackerland is Ozzy Osbourne. He made his name with last year's controversial Prodigy video. Now everyone from Madonna to Jamiroquai want to work with him. There's even a waiting list. The funny thing is, Jonas never wanted to make pop videos. Rest assured that we are working on this problem 24 hours. Our delegates are behind the scene, not... I always wanted to do commercials. I like the format, it's short and it's like fast. I always say that I, I don't have a, a style, but I realize now, 250 commercials later, that I maybe do have a style. I never wanted to do music videos. Most TVs have a speaker about this size, so it's so important that the images should bring out the music stronger. Four years ago, I stopped uh, watching other commercials and I stopped watching other videos and I stopped reading 
fashion magazines. That was when I started to do my good ideas. So what I tried to do is like go back to myself and come up with an idea that means something for me, like a dream or something that I've been through, something real. The relationship with Roxette is, is going back years. You know, if you come this far and know each other as good as we do, it makes everything easy. So it's really, it's both fun and easy to work with, which is good. For me as a video director, it's my responsibility to make sure that the video is not boring. I went out in Copenhagen and did uh, the whole thing. I did a Smack My Bitch Up night. I woke up in a hotel room the day after and I put on a track. I was lying in my bed and I remember seeing my foot kicking a door. And I thought that's a really good idea. It did two things. I lost a lot of commercial clients and I got a lot of music videos. And I got a lot of people who wanted to work with me, but a lot of people who didn't have the guts to work with me. Editing it is definitely my favorite side of, of the job. I, I couldn't live without it. You know, like hands-on editing, being creative together with the music, putting, putting sound and images together is like magic if you get it to work. You know, he's not a flapper. He's not somebody who gets all panicky about things. He just takes his time, takes it easy. And it's good. I'm glad I'm working with him. I wrote a lot of treatments for Madonna that she didn't like. But then finally, I think it was like the fifth treatment I wrote. That's the one we, we finally did. And I hate to say she was right. So I have a big problem with inspiration. Uh, so I don't have that much inspiration. And I, and I, I would say that's my, the, the toughest thing in my life is to come up with all these ideas. When I did turn the page, I know I had a really good idea. That's my best video. I'm sorry, madam, but we can't let you through Her Majesty's customs carrying this stuff. But I don't understand, officer. They are just my clothes. Madam, there's no point arguing. We are refusing you entry. To you, they may be just clothes, but to us here in the UK, they are so last season. Sometimes we're just too kind to tell our friends what we really think of their clothes. And don't you cringe when your mum and dad tell you you look nice. But often, it's the older generation that tell you the truth. Meet Jim and Margaret. What do they look like? This week, we were looking at some dresses that Elizabeth Hurley and Catherine Zeta-Jones wore at the Diamonds Forever Versace charity show. With Catherine Zeta-Jones, she, she's come out from a floundering duckling to a swan. The top of her looks very, very nice. The bottom part doesn't quite go in line with it. I think the material is a bit too flimsy. Don't you think it's possibly because of the colouring? No, no, it's the material. Also, I've seen her with a much better hairstyle than that. Uh, she looks too severe. Now, Liz Hurley, with her hair, she's let it uh, just straight down, which it, it suits her, it looks very nice. But you expect her to have it dressed, which is very rarely what the hairdressers do these days. That I think they get away with murder. Delasol said it many years ago, but three 
is still the magic number. Well, at least as far as transport goes. From trendy three-wheel prams to the revamped Robin Reliant. Everything adds up to three. So no surprises then about the latest imports on the streets of London. So you thought that a silver shadow Rolls Royce was the coolest way to make an entrance. Wrong. You thought that a scooter was the hottest deal on wheels. Wrong again. The only way to turn heads in London Soho is to arrive at a club in one of these. It's a rickshaw or a pedicab as these have been renamed. They turn heads better than limos, Ferraris, motorbikes, anything. I've clocked up 25 miles an hour before. I can go all night really, I can. Probably about four or five in the morning probably. We've got a couple of like regular drag queens we take from like their club that they promote into the next club and they fly along the way. And... Oh darling, since I've arrived with my three wheelers, transformed, I've transformed the place with my driver. The customer normally pick up is normally people have had a few drinks normally it is. You get a lot a lot of suits in the back who just go absolutely crazy. <laughs> After midnight, between 12 and 3, when they come in the clubs, and they want to go home or go to club to club and that sort of thing. And what, what do you reckon is the best thing about your job? The variety of people I meet, the fact that it's good for the environment, and the satisfaction I give all the punters. They may well be the most environmentally friendly form of transport around, but that's not why the clubbers love them. What is it that appeals to you about riding in a pedicab as opposed to a good looking man? Good looking man! Just his muscly legs! Pole, he has pole. the power to take us wherever we want to go. I think the coolest thing about the pedicabs is that you can actually eye people up on the street while you're going along and actually talk to them, which is pretty cool. So you can actually pull people from the pedicab. You can pull from the pedicab, and if you're on your own, you can get somebody in next to you. Fantastic. <laughs> you don't want to be in a cab, but it's awesome. Okay. This is the way forward. This is the way forward. People feel the need to like pretend to be the Queen and to sing and they get in the back of the rickshaw. I picked a couple up from the ABBA show one time they sang all the way from Peter Wolf Street. So come on, what do you think of your, uh, your experience? It's the only way to go, it's the best thing ever, this guy's amazing. I loved it, I'll never get on the tube again, this is the only way to go. <laughs> Thanks for that John. Well it's three o'clock in the morning but Soho is still buzzing. I'm off to bed but John Roy and all the lads are going to be working hard for a good few hours yet. People are all talking about how The Matrix is the coolest film around at the moment. But this clip from The Bride of Chucky has got to be the best fashion movie moment going. Stay cool. Until next time I see you. And if you ask me, I reckon that Emma Jeshin should definitely be in the top five weather girls. There's going to be more Slave on T4 next Sunday. We're not going to be in the Channel 4 building. We've been evicted. So join in, tune in to find out where we're actually going to be. We will have some tickets for Party in the Park to give away, though. It's a fantastic gig. All the tickets are sold out, but we've scammed some. We're going to be giving you a chance to win them. Joe Wiley left us 20 signed copies of her incredible CD. It's out in the shops now. If you go to our website, then you've got a chance of winning that CD. Do keep the questions about Dawson's Creek coming in, the comments about Dawson's Creek. We do enjoy reading them. Keep them up at t4.channel4.com on the website. We're going to leave you with the network premiere, the weird and wonderful remix by Cornelius. This is Tsunami by the Mannix.